Today we are going over making business decisions. Um, and really this is just the ins and outs of how businesses work. Again, we're going to go over most of these terms and any of the other ones you should be able to understand from the definition. All right, again, two minutes, start writing, and you can continue writing once I begin talking. So we are going to start with natural resources. And the simple way of thinking about this is it's raw materials. So anything that is used in the base elements to then create something. So this could be minerals like metal alloys or coal, or it can be uh, natural, or they're all natural materials, but uh, things above ground such as lumber, water can be a natural resource. Uh, and even at times too, human beings are considered a natural resource because they are naturally occurring and they are part of the production process. So that's, that's what we're talking about because not every business manufactures something. Some businesses provide services. And while they, again, when we talk about capital, that's what, where capital comes in, but they still use a natural resource and that, that they have to hire people. And that's a little different than labor, which we're going to get to in just a second. So second is capital. We talked about capital in a, a couple of lessons ago, as this is money that individuals invest into businesses, whether it's money you put up yourself for your own business or you go to investors for. You're trying to raise capital. Now, the idea is, is with that, when you invest in your business, you are buying things in order to either make your business more efficient or to expand your business. So capital would be eventually becomes the equipment or the locations of your business. So that could be the building that you're operating out of, the machines that you need to manufacture something, um, to even just the basic kind of everyday stuff like computers you would need for an office space or the desks and the furniture for an office space, that's considered capital. And as we've talked about before, when companies or individuals go into debt, they have to sell off assets. And so capital becomes an asset in the company. So if you buy a multi-million dollar machine that produces, uh, ev you know, you just put a few things in and it produces everything that you need, then that's gonna be an asset to your company and that you can sell off to make money to pay back your debt. Or if you're a corporation, that's exactly the same way how it works, is that if the corporation goes under, those 
items, those uh, pieces of equipment get sold off and they can be used uh, to directly pay debt. Then finally, on this slide, we get to labor. So labor is not the actual human being themselves. The labor is the work that they put in. So, and with this is all these are in some way, like you have to buy natural resources or you have to raise capital to get those, that, that equipment or you know, anything that you need to operate your business. Labor, the money exchange there is, is the rate that you would pay somebody for their work. And so that's where the exchange comes in. So, um, so if, for instance, if you decide, well, we want to make sure that we have enough people to work and produce and do whatever we need, then you might hire a lot of workers. But then because of your profit margins, you may not be able to pay everybody a high wage because you need to make sure that everybody gets paid. So that would lower wages. But if you value labor uh, at a low value too, let's say it's that if your workers aren't getting paid enough, nobody's gonna wanna work at your job. So it becomes this balancing act and that's where negotiations happen. And uh, when we do talk about collective bargaining and things like that, that's where that comes in, is that the workers try and bargain for a higher wage and it's the business owner to try and figure out how to properly compensate their workers while making profits and making sure that it is a place, a business that workers would want to work at. All right, last slide, same as before. The last part of business decisions and business overall is what we call entrepreneurship. Now the textbook gives a very bland, basic idea of what a uh, entrepreneur is, which is it's a business owner. But there's a little bit more to that. Remember, when you, if you want to become a business owner, what that means is, is that you have to put your own time, your own money, your own work into getting it started. So an entrepreneur is the person who actually has the idea for the business and the drive to get that business off the ground. So that's why it gets a fancier name than just business owner, right? I mean, frankly speaking, like a business owner can be somebody who just has a lot of money. They come in and they, they buy up a business. But an entrepreneur is the person who actually like starts from the idea form and carries it all the way through. So without entrepreneurs, we would not have many of the businesses, many of the corporations that we have today. Uh, best examples of these are what we see in the uh, 
tech air, or tech venues is that somebody had an idea one day of uh, you know uh, you know how do we get people to you know share longer than 30 second videos and and be able to instantly record and do games and stuff like that and then TikTok is born or even back when Twitter came about which was uh, somebody can just share a quick idea of a certain number of characters and so the people who created those companies those entrepreneurs took it from an idea created the technology to get it onto your phones and then they take off and they become you know global phenomenons so in all of this is remember and a lot of us got this wrong the United States is a mixed economy, meaning that we do have free enterprise, we do have a, an open market system, but the government has some regulations on that. There is some government interference. So that's what makes it a mixed economy, is that if we, we had no government interference, we would be a pure, a pure uh, capitalist, pure free market economy. If we had the government controlled everything, that would be something completely different. So, what is the government's role? It is a balancing act because now in current present day, the federal government has to make sure because you have these corporations that have capital in different states and different cities, and because once they move into different states, then they're no longer, they're under some state regulation, but it's really the federal government to step in and say, well, you, you have to make sure that you do this consistently across the board, not from state to state. So they have to balance their policies between supporting businesses and protecting workers. And that's because of the rise of unions that happened in the late 1800s, early 1900s, as well as equality movements in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. And they, that's where the federal government steps in, right, in terms of protecting workers, as well as they want to make sure that we are a place, we are a country, that anyone who has an idea, any entrepreneur has an idea, they can come to the United States and they can start that business and make it flourish and pay those taxes. So they, we definitely want that competition, uh, but we need to make sure that the competition is not stifled or is it stopped. So we have to, that's where the federal government comes in to protect smaller businesses and making sure that monopolies or one company doesn't control an entire industry. And then of course, we need to make sure that workers are not being exploited for their labor, meaning that they're being paid too little or they're having to work way too many hours or they're having to work too many days in a week. So that's why the federal government has stepped in and issued, said that there's a standard work week is a 40 hour work week. And that standard work days are typically, it's a five day work day week. Now most places that's Monday through Friday, but you might, but you at least get two, you should get two days off no matter what job you have, unless you volunteer to give up one of those extra days. So setting like policies on minimum wages and fair labor, uh, practices help the government monitor business and industries like the FCC looks over communications companies making sure that they're putting out the right you know fair material that they're not being too biased and that they give everybody e equal access to that information but this is where political parties can step in one party might think no we need to restrict business more other parties say no we need less restrictions so that's where we're going to leave off today.